Hello and welcome to project number 7, Linear Feedback Shift Register. Let's have a quick project overview. In part 1 of this project, we are going to design in Verilog the following modules. An Edge Detect module, a 16-bit Linear Feedback Shift Register, a 7-segment decoder, a debounce model, a Blinky LED module, and a top-level module that integrates all of the previous modules. After this, we are going to create a Verilog test bench for the linear feedback shift register and another one for the top module. Next, we are going to simulate our test bench to see if the design has the correct functionality. In part 2 of this project, we are going to create a Quartus project, synthesize the top module, connect the design to the FPGA pins, and program the D1 SOC development board and see how our design works on an Altera Cyclone 5 FPGA. After programming the FPGA, you should be able to see something like this on your 7 segment displays. If you are a complete beginner, I would suggest trying some of these easier projects before implementing this one. In project number 5, you will implement the Blinky LED module used to generate a 2 Hz frequency so we can observe the changes of the LFSR on the 7 segment displays. If you watch project number 6, you will get detailed explanations about how to build a debouncer module used to filter input noise on the enable signal that is coming from a switch. Let's analyze now the block level top diagram for this cool project. It has a 50 MHz clock input port and a asynchronous reset N which is debounced using an external Schmidt trigger placed on the DE1 SOC development board. The enable is connected to a mechanical switch on the board and the circuit will start generating pseudo-random numbers only if enable has a logical value of 1. Enable is first debounced for 10 milliseconds to filter any noisy pulses and after this it enables the blinky LED module. This module is reused from a previous project and can be parameterized to output pulses with a minimum frequency of 1 Hz using a 50 MHz clock. By changing its parameters, you can even obtain pulses that last even more than one second. The signal coming from the Blinky LED module is passed to an Edge Detect module that creates an output pulse that lasts exactly one clock. This signal enables the 16-bit LFSR to generate a new pseudo-random number and stop until the next pulse comes from the Blinky LED. The value generated by the LFSR is displayed using four 7-segment displays controlled using the four decoders. In the end, your project should behave exactly as in the GIF. Before implementing the Verilog code for this project, let's see some LFSR generics first. A linear feedback shift register is a shift register whose input bit is a linear function of its previous state. They are very popular for generating pseudo-random numbers, pseudo-noise sequences, in cryptography and in telecom. All LFSRs start from an initial value called a seed. As you can see, my value here is 0x5eed, which looks visually the same as seed. The bits from the positions creating the feedback network are called taps. A new value is created each clock cycle. The advantage of this kind of circuits is the value repeats periodically. If you start from a different value of the seed, you will get a totally different sequence of numbers. The behavior of a linear feedback shift register is characterized by a feedback polynomial. For example, the LFSR over here can be characterized by this polynomial. If the polynomial is primitive, then the LFSR has a maximal length. A n-bit LFSR has a maximum number of 2 at the power of m-1 states. After this, it repeats periodically. As for the seed value, you should avoid all 0 and all 1s, because the LFSR will remain stuck. You can easily implement hardware and software LFSRs by using polynomial tables. We will not dive in the algebra behind these polynomials, but you can read more in the resources down below this video. And now it's action time! Please create the following Verilog files. Note that the full project can be downloaded from ovisign.com slash courses. Let's implement now every one of these files. Please create a new Verilog file called edgedetect.v. 
This is the easiest module inside our design and we are going to start with it. This is a very popular module used in many many designs. The functionality can be described in the following manner. Whenever the iDetect input passes from 0 to 1, then you will get a pulse lasting only one clock on ODetect. This module is very useful whenever iDetect lasts more than one clock cycle, but you want to do only one operation when it changes from 0 to 1. As a small note, iDetect should last more than one clock period. Let's analyze the Verilog code now. Here we declare the module ports, and here we have the internal variables. This code over here describes the first flip-flop. This creates a one clock delay between iDetect and this signal over here, which is called delay. OutPulse is created by using the inverted value of delay and the iDetect value. So this means the following. Whenever you have a transition from 0 to 1 on iDetect, the first flip-flop will set in the next clock cycle, like over here. So OutPulse will set for one clock and after this will become 0. This flip-flop over here is optional, but I consider it to be a best practice because this limits the combinational circuit that is created upstream from this module. So you will get better synthesis results. For example, when I synthesized the complete top module only using this circuit, I had a maximum frequency of 162 MHz, but when I added this flip-flop, I obtained a maximum frequency of 178 MHz, so a 10% increase in performance only by adding a simple flip-flop over here. Cool, right? Remember that if you want to easily master Verilog for ASIC or FPGA design and verification, I recommend you the course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design on Verification. Let's create now the central piece of our project. This is the 16-bit linear feedback shift register. The code is very simple. Here we have a parameter that gives us the initial value of the seed. Next we have the module ports. It has a clock, a reset M, an enable and a 16-bit output. Here we have an internal variable used to create the shift register. This wire over here is used to create the feedback network. We first create the feedback network by using the polynomial over here. I use the minus 1 over here to have more clarity because we count the bits from 15 to 0. Here we have a simple behavior of shift register. Whenever we have a posit clock and if enable is set, then the LFSR is shifted one bit to the left and the feedback network is fed into the LSB. In the end, we assign the output to the LFSR register. This is it. Simple, right? After you synthesize this module, you will get a circuit similar to this. A bunch of flip-flops and an XOR gate for the feedback network. Since this is the central module of our design, let's create a test bench for it. Please create a new file called tblfsr16.v with the following content. You add here the test bench variables. Here we have some counters used for automatic verification. And here we have a parameter for the seed. Next we instantiate the DUT, connect the ports with the test bench variables, and here we create the clock signal. Let's analyze the test scenario now. Initially reset and enable have the value 0. After this, reset n is asserted to 1. Next, after two clocks, we use the compare data task. Initially we check the value of LFSR to have the same value as the seed parameter. Let's see how the task is implemented. We have two 16 bits input data. We have two 16 bit inputs for the expected and observed data. The bit is equal is used to validate if the expected equals the observed. Here we use the case equality because observed data can have values of x or z if the design is done in a wrong manner. The task works like this. If this bit is set, then we are checking if expected data equals observed data. Otherwise, we check that expected data is different than observed data. How is this going to help us validate the LFSR functionality? Well, it's pretty simple. If our polynomial is maximal, then it should repeat at every 2 at the power of 16 minus 1. Otherwise, its current value should be different than the seed. Let's go back to the test scenario. After we compare the value of the LFSR initially with seed, now for 2 at the power of 16 minus 2, we wait for LFSR to change, then we call the compare data task. Because this is set to 0, it will check that the LFSR has a different value than the seed. Next we wait one more transition of the LFSR, 
and we check that the LFSR equals the seed again. Then we disable the enable, wait for some clocks, and set enable again. We repeat this three times to be extra sure that the LFSR behavior is periodical. In the end we print the final test report, that has the variables that were incremented inside the compare data task. Please create a new model sim project and add LFSR16 and the test bench inside it. After you start the simulation, you should see this. If we zoom over here, we can see that after 2 at the power of 16 transitions, the LFSR value reaches the initial value of the seed, which is 0x5eed. Then we don't have any toggles while enable is 0, and then we start all over again. If you want to improve the test bench, you can add a checker that validates every transition of the LFSR. Let's check something interesting now. Let's alter the polynomial and see if our test bench catches any errors. Let's write here 14 for example. We save it. Go to the project, right click, compile all. I also have all the other files in the project, but you don't need them for this test bench. Press restart and run all. As you can see, we have a ton of errors. Why is that? Because this is also an LFSR, but it's not a maximal polynomial. So it repeats itself much often. As you can see, where the error counter incremented to 1, the initial value of the seed is reached again. So even it is a simple test bench, it does catch a lot of errors. Let's change this back. And now we're back on the right track. Let's implement the other files. Here is the content of the 7 segment decoder. Note that you can download the code from ovisign.com slash courses. This code was explained in project number 3. This is the bleaky LED code. This will help us generate pulses at a frequency of 2 Hz or a different one. This code was explained in project number 5. Here you have the code for the debouncer. This code was explained in project number 6. Let's analyze the top module for the LFSR. Here we have the parameters, and next we have the port section. These wires are internal logic and they are also called glue logic because they are used to connect all the other sub-modules of the top module. Here we first instantiate the debouncer, we set a stable time of 10 milliseconds, in the input we connect the enable, and on the output we connect the enable debounced wire. Next we instantiate the blinky LED module, we connect here the enable debounced with the input enable, and the OLED with the divided clock wire. Because the divided clock actually lasts for hundreds of thousands of clock periods, we pass this signal to the edge detect module. This module will create a pulse that lasts only one clock. The output of this module is ended with the enable debounced and creates the LFSR enable. So we will get one pseudo random number at a frequency of 2 Hz for this configuration. In the end we instantiate four seven segment decoders. Now we are able to display on the FPGA board our 16-bit value. Let's create a test bench for the top module to check if we connected everything together right. We declare here the timescale. Next we have the test bench variables that are going to be connected with the module ports. Here we have the parameters which are going to be connected here. I use this value for the seed because on the 7 segment displays it looks like the word seed. Next we connect the module ports. Here we have the clock signal. And here our test scenario is much more trivial. We reset the module, we enable it, and then we wait for 5 toggles of the hex 0 bus. This means that we wait to generate 5 pseudo random numbers. After this, we clear the enable and stop the test bench. Let's simulate this now. Because I already had all the files, now I should stop this simulation and start another one. I 
I select the test bench top. Okay. After you add all the signals on the wave, you press start simulation. And it will take a very, very long time. But eventually you will see how hex zero toggles. This is happening because we are simulating seconds of the module functionality. If you want to make this faster, we stop the simulation. You write here six, decreasing the frequency. Compile all. And now you make the simulation 1000 times faster. You should really thank me for this little hack because it's going to help you a lot in simulations that last a long time. In the end, you should see this. So you can see how the LFSR changes and how the hex are toggling. What's interesting here is that the same transitions you are going to see on the board. That was it. Let's go to part two of this project. I'm very, very curious. What do you think about this project? If you find it interesting, please leave me a comment below. If you really, really like it, you can press the like and subscribe button. If you like this tutorial and you're interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.